and look up on the screen at 1 Chronicles 29.9. Look at this. Then the people rejoiced, for they offered what? Willingly. Look at that. Because with perfect heart, that means a mature heart, they offered how? Willingly to the Lord. I don't see any grumpy givers right there. Do you? Yeah, here comes the plate again. That's all they do is ask for money. I know why the church has three services. So they can get money three times. You know, I've heard that. But I don't see that in God's Word where you see grumpy givers. It says they offered willingly and they gave from their heart, man, a perfect heart, man, a mature heart. You know what? You don't have to beg people to give who have a mature heart in Christ and have a love for their God. Why? Because they're like, hey, I want to give. Pastor, can we give to this? Hey, Pastor, can we give to this? I love it when people come and say, Pastor, can we give to this? Can we give to that? And unfortunately, we can't give to everything. And we have to tell them, no, we don't have it. But I love that. You know why? Because it shows me and tells me, man, our people are wanting to give. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll back you 100%. What can you give? We'll start with you. Well, that turns some heads. That turns them around sometimes. It's like, oh, no, I want you to do it. No, you start it, and I'll promote it. What are you going to give? And look at it. It says they gave willing to the Lord, and David the king also what? He rejoiced with great joy. Why? Because the people were giving, and it blessed David's heart. And he's like, man, I want to be a part of this too. And uh, you know what? Let me ask you a question. Is giving to God something that is normal for a believer? Is it something that should be normal for a believer, yes or no? Sure. And as we study the Word of God, do you know what we find in your handout? Giving is the natural and normal response of a person that loves God. I'll repeat it. Giving is a natural and normal response from a person who just loves God. Now I'm going to tell you something. When you talk to people who are bitter about giving, who are bitter about uh, uh, letting things go monetarily and giving to certain uh, uh, events or giving to certain things at the church or giving to the work of the Lord, I should say, okay? I don't even like saying giving to the church. I, lo- I believe the Bible teaches giving unto the Lord, the God's work. And, and, and yeah, I know that's the local body of Christ, but, but understand that I believe that people who have a hard time dealing with that are people who do not have a complete love for God. In other words, I'm saying that they love things or other things more than they do God. Say, Pastor, what if I don't have it to give? We're not talking about that. That's not the issue. The issue is your heart. It's your heart. And uh, it's like this. um, A husband who loves his wife. Do Do you know a husband who loves his wife doesn't need a list to remind him to love his wife? Um, when you come home today, kiss your wife. Five o'clock. Like off the list. Oh, it says that you and I uh, uh, need to go on a date Thursday night. Honey, we're going on a date Thursday night. Why? Because the list says we got to go on a date. All right. That's okay. We'll do that. And that's another one. I must tell you I love you 14 times a day. I love you. 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 I'll make it. You know what? All right. That one's off the list. Listen, a person who is in love with God doesn't need someone to tell them to give. You don't even need the Bible to tell you to give. Why? Because your love is so much for God. You're like, man, I can't wait to give. And a guy who, a person who is in love with his spouse, his wife, or a woman who is in love with her husband, uh, they don't need some list. They don't need some government agency telling them when to love or how to love. Why? Because it comes from the heart. The same principle is true between us and our God. And that's why our giving matters to God. I mean, how can we become a grace giver? And, and the title of the message is, does what I give really matter to God? Does, does, does my money that I give really matter to God? I want to tell you, it matters. It really matters. And it isn't because God is dependent on our resources. God's not up in heaven right now twiddling his thumbs, wringing his hands, scratching his head, wondering, is the bills going to get paid? He doesn't do that. Okay, God, God's not up in heaven, wringing his hands, wondering it, how, 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 where the money's going to come from. God doesn't do that. 
And it's because our giving reflects the love in our heart for God. And that is very special to God. And so God understands and, and, and wants us to learn from his word tonight that as we love God, we will give to God. Okay? And God desires to, for us to have, truly love him. Look at 2 Corinthians up on the screen. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your what? Your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Now, that verse is also on our envelopes, our giving envelopes. Why? Because look at the bottom of the sentence. That ye abound in this grace also. Abound in what grace? What does God want us to abound in? What does he want us to grow in? What grace? Giving. He wants us to go in the, grow in the grace-giving area of our life. Look at the next verse. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others. And to what? Prove the sincerity of your what? Want to know how you can prove your love for God? Give. Say, nobody knows what I give. Nope, but God does. And that's all that should matter. Amen? Listen, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't know what you give. I don't want to know. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is that you give. And I'm not here to impress you with my giving. I'm here to impact eternity for Christ. And I'm here to express my love for God through my giving. And I do it as heartily as unto the Lord. The Bible says, whatever you do, do heartily as unto the Lord. Amen, church? Are you with me? Feel like giving? Amen. We'll see. Our giving in your handout matters to God because we matter to God. People say, what difference does it make? I'll tell you why it makes a difference. My giving matters to God because I matter. Isn't that good? I, I matter to God, and so therefore everything I do matters to Him. Well, I love that. He's so personal with me and you. He loves us. He cares about our relationship with Him. And so tonight, we're going to see, uh, throughout God's Word, uh, we're going to see uh, some different things or different uh, times of giving. Okay? First thing, write it in your handout. Here, I want to talk about giving before the law of Moses. And that's where I want you to go in Genesis chapter 8. All right? Say, so you'll never get done. Oh, I'm getting done. We're going we're gonna to blaze the trail here. All right? Look, look, look at this. Genesis chapter 8. Now, I want you to understand this. In Genesis chapter 8, uh, you guys who know your Bible, and I know you do, um, was there any written word of God in the book of Genesis? Yes or no? No, I'll give you the answer. You guys paused and scared me a little bit, all right? There was no written word of God in the book of Genesis. There was no written law. There, there was no Bible. There, God hadn't written anything yet, okay? Come Exodus came the law. God started writing some stuff down, okay? But in the book of, of, of Genesis, the uh, book of beginnings, there was no writing, okay? It was all God speaking to man audibly and and speaking to him and 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 so this is we're going to talk about giving before the law of Moses and we know that during the time of Israel's law giving was actually written into the law and mandated okay but we're not talking about that but what about before God's law was written I mean people say well God says you know you you give the 10th and it's mandated well we'll get to that subject in a minute but what about before it we got to talk about before it was there any giving before the law? Because there is a book called Genesis. And uh, there was no Bible written until Exodus came, okay, until the time of Exodus. And so look at Genesis chapter 8, look at verse 20. Look at this. This is the story of Noah. You know this story very well. I love this story. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 and 21. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Now we know the story. Uh, God told Noah, build an ark. He built the ark. And uh, he says, man, it's going to rain. And we're going to flood the earth. I'm wiping out the earth. And there was only eight people that were saved. Only eight people survived this because only eight people got on the ark. Okay, that was Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wife. Only eight people on the, on the ark. And the first thing that Noah did after he left the ark 
and, and, and after they arrived on dry land and it was safe for them to come out, is he built an altar and made an offering to the Lord. And of course there was no money at this time. So this was Noah's way of giving to the Lord. All right? And so Lord, uh, uh, Noah is offering these sacrifices unto the Lord. And in your handout, instead of keeping all the animals for himself and his family for food, he gave to God and trusted God. He gave to God and trusted God. Okay? The Bible's clear about that. Now, he could have said, hey, guys, we survived. Okay? We survived the Titanic. Hey, let's have a barbecue. Let's cook up some birds. He didn't do that. The Bible says he took that fowl and he took those beasts and he gave that back to God. Hey, let me tell you something. There was giving before the law of Moses. There was giving even here. Did Noah, let me ask you this question. Did Noah's giving in your handout matter to God? Yes or no? Hey, what did he say? Look at verse 21. He says, and uh, the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Hey, I want you to know it was a big deal to God. God, it mattered to God, and God noticed. God says, whew, boy, does that please me. So I'm not so sure. Well, I can prove it to you. In your handout, write this in. It so moved the heart of God that God made a promise to never send a catastrophic judgment like the flood ever again. Okay? Look at verse 21. He says, I will not again curse the ground any." more. Listen, every time you see a rainbow in the sky, that is a reminder to you and I, God keeps his promises. And because he noticed Noah's giving, we still see it today. Amen. Hey, want people to notice your giving or not people to notice your giving, but you want your giving to uh, be a legacy? You give for eternity's sake, and while you're dead and gone, the ministry will still go on. Why? Because you sacrificed today so ministry could continue. Amen. Man, that's the principle here. We're still talking about Noah, by the way. The boys and girls in junior church and children's ministry still learn this story even today. Why? Because Noah gave. Man, I love that. I love this story. Now turn to Genesis 14. Look at that. Boy, this is the story of Abraham. Genesis 14, look at verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedorlamar, Kedolamar, and the king that were with him, and the kings that were with him, excuse me, at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale, and Machilzadek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram, Abraham of the Most High God possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high God which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand and he gave him tithes of all Abraham came against some wicked kings who had taken captive uh, who had taken captive some of Abraham's family here in the context and when Abraham returned from war he was met by the kingly priest Melchizedek or uh, Melchizedek who is God's representative on earth. Everybody, a lot of people, you know, who's this, who's this person? This is God's representative on earth at the time. And in your handout, notice that Abraham gave him tithes of all his spoils from war. Folks, what is a tithe? It's a tenth. Write that in. That's what, that's what the tithe meant then. It means tenth, all right? Let me ask you this. Did God notice Abraham's giving, yes or no? Is it noted and remembered thousands of years later by God in the New Testament? Yeah. You go to Hebrews chapter 7, and it's written there. You go to Hebrews chapter 7, and it talks about Abraham. And it talks about his sacrifice. And it talks about how he was found righteous before God. That he, through his faith, that he was found righteous before God. Say, what does this tell you and I? Well, in your handout, write this in. Even before there was any written word, there was something in the heart of Noah and Abraham that knew and wanted to give to their God. 
and their giving mattered to God, God did not take it lightly. Hey, I thank God for Noah and Abraham. I want you to know God noticed their giving. All right? So that's giving before the law of Moses. Let me give you the second part. Uh, giving during the law of Moses. Say, say, this is boring. Well, let me tell you something. Your giving's not boring, so this message shouldn't be boring because this is very foundational for the next few messages. And I want you to get this because you've got to understand these time periods and you've got to understand these different times of giving in the Bible. So we've already discussed giving before the law. Let's talk about during the law of Moses, all right? The first scripture ever to be written from God was called the law of Moses. This is a covenant between God and his people Israel. It consisted of numerous laws and regulations, many of which dealt with the area of giving. And by the way, it was about 613 uh, laws altogether. There were a lot of laws. Not all of them were dealing with giving, but many of them. And listen very closely. This is in your handout, by the way, and you can just follow along. Um, there's nothing to fill in here, but I want you to get it. We're not even going to go to the Scripture, okay? You can read about this. In Exodus and Deuteronomy, uh, Leviticus, uh, uh, those are books of the law in your Bible. And in Deuteronomy 14.22, Israel was commanded annually 10% of all their income that was produced went to God or went through the tithe. That's in your handout. Okay? So in Deuteronomy 14, 22, uh, God uh, mandated this and said, Okay, Israel, listen to me. You will actually give 10% of all your income that you receive, and that's going to go to me as a tithe, as a tenth. But also in Deuteronomy 14, 27, in your handout, follow that along, another 10% went to the Levites uh, and the priests for their livelihood and to keep and maintain the temple. So listen. Listen to me now. People who just preach the tenth or the tithe, they don't preach all of it. If you're going to preach it, preach all of it, okay? Tell them to bring 20% to the church, not just 10, all right? And, uh, and, and, and I'm saying that if we're going to preach God's Word, let's preach the whole counsel of God's Word. Sarah, are you going to start preaching 20%? No, I'm going to preach something better, okay? And I'm going to show that to you in just a minute and through these series, Okay? We have a better system. We have something better that God has given us. Okay? We're not under the law. The Bible says that we have been freed from the law. Okay? This is the law of Moses. Are we Israel, yes or no? Okay, you've learned that principle. You know the age that we live in. We don't live in the age or during the uh, dispensation of the law or during that time period. We live in the dispensation of grace. Okay? Different program for us. We're not under the kingdom program. All right? But look at this, 10% right off the top goes to God for the tithe. But another 10% comes off the top for you to pray, pay the priest and the Levites for the care and keep of the temple. Uh-oh, we got a problem now, because then there's a third one. Look at Deuteronomy 14, 28 in your handout. Every third year, another 10% went towards a type of social welfare program for the poor and afflicted. So you get 20% every year, but then also off the top of that, every third year you get another 10% off of that. <laughs> don't you love it? I love God's plan, man. But you don't hear them other people preaching and teaching that stuff. If you just sold to my ministry, God will bless you. Well, won't you preach this stuff? Okay? Won't you preach it all? Matter of fact, are you living this way? You hypocrite? No, you're not. You're not living that way. Are you selling all that you have and giving to the poor? No, you're not. No, you're not. But you preach that stuff, and then you, you, you through a whipping post and browbeating everybody else to follow your plan. Listen, you don't even follow God's plan completely. All right? And so if we're going to preach it, let's teach it all. But, but let's understand, this is during the law of Moses. We don't live in this time period. Again, I ask you, did Israel's giving matter to God? Yes or no? Did Noah's giving matter? Yes. Did Abraham's matter? Yes. Did he care if they did or did not do it? Say, what if them people at Israel, what if them Israelites didn't give? Well, I've got some news for you. Turn to Malachi. It's the book right before. Uh, uh, it's the last book of the Old Testament. Okay, So if you go to Matthew and back up to the left of the book, you'll be in Malachi. How about that? Look at Malachi. Say, you're going to get through this. I sure am. I love 
teaching on this stuff. I'm not scared to teach this stuff at all. I'm not st- scared to teach or, or, or shameful or embarrassed or worried about what people are going to think when I teach on giving. And uh, why? Because if you teach it biblically and if you teach it with a Christ-filled heart and a Christ-filled spirit, let me tell you something. The pressure's not on me. It, the pressure's on you of what you're going to do with what you hear. Okay? You have to respond to what you hear and what you're taught. Now, if I'm not teaching something biblically, then we have a problem, okay? And, uh, and, but I'm, I'm telling you, and you can look through the Scripture, and you can follow along right with where I'm giving you. I'm going to give you notes for all six messages, just like what you got tonight, and these little short handouts. You're going to get a message every time. And that way you can follow along, you can look up all the Scripture, you can get in the context, and you can see it for yourself, Okay? There's no magical button. There's no magical potion. I have nothing to gain from this except this. I want to see the work of the Lord continue, and it will not continue if the people of God, if the body of Christ do not give. Amen? Do you get it? Do you understand that? Okay, so then the Bible says, and we read this in in the verse earlier, okay, that we must abound out of 2 Corinthians, we must abound in this grace also. We must abound in this grace also to prove our, the sincerity of our love, according to 2 Corinthians 8. All right, So it's very important for us to understand this, is that for us to uh, be a part of this or really to uh, grab a hold of this, God wants us to grow in this. God wants you to grow in your faith. He wants you to grow in your spiritual uh, growth in Him, in, in your closeness to Him, but He also wants you to grow in your giving. Now, how often do you hear that? God wants you to grow in your giving. No one does that. They just want you to give. Listen, do you know that God wants you to do it? Forget about what some guy tells you. God wants you to grow in this uh, grace also. And, and so, listen to me. In Malachi chapter 3, we ask the question, did God care if Israel gave? Did he even notice? What if they didn't give? What if they shortcut the system? We're like, I'm not giving. How do they know if I give or not? Well, I'll tell you. God knows. Okay? And uh, God knows that what you do. And God knows what they did. And so look at Malachi chapter 3. Look at verse 7 through 9. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Whew, that's not a good start. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? That's not a good response, okay? That's not a good answer, a good question. Then look at verse 8. Will a man rob God? Now I'm going to tell you, if God asked you that question, that ain't cool, man. Okay, that ain't good. Uh, God's not asking that because he's just trying to make conversation. Okay, that, that, that's, things aren't fixing to go well for them. He says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. Uh-oh. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? He even asked the question for them. I love it. I love it. He goes, in tithes and offerings. Look at at verse 9. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now hold on. Guys who preach this stuff will tell you, you'll be cursed with a curse if you don't give. Now I'm going to tell you something. These verses speak directly to the nation of Israel, not to you. And it also said to this nation, okay, nation of Israel, okay? So let's kind of be thinkers here and let's think for a moment. God says, you have robbed me of the tithes and offerings. God clearly tells them and gave them in Deuteronomy what they were supposed to do. Now I'm going to tell you something. I asked the question, did it bother God or would it bother God if they didn't give? Well, from reading this in your handout, would you say it mattered to God? Yes or no? Yeah. In your handout, God knew that they loved their possessions more than they loved Him, and it bothered God. God knew, hey, you people, my people, this nation of Israel loves their stuff and loves their possession more than you love me. And God says, you know what? I noticed that, and I will not excuse it. And God says, ye are cursed with a curse. Okay, that's not good. But understand this. That's not good for Israel. And maybe some of you have grown up under that teaching. Maybe some of you have grown up like, hey, that's what I've been taught. That's what I've been heard. So I've I've been guilt-tripped into giving. 
Different program. Different program. Okay? So I want you to know that's not what God's doing today. And thirdly, we saw giving before the law of Moses, giving during the law of Moses, but thirdly, giving during Christ's earthly ministry. Okay, once you write that in, go to Matthew 6. Book to the right, Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Now, get this in your handout. Jesus came to the lost sheep of Israel. Okay, we all understand that. We all know that. The Bible says that Jesus came into his own. Okay, he was a Jew. He came to the Jews. The Bible says he came to his own. His own, own received him not. Jesus came to the lost sheep of Israel. He came to tell them to, re, to repent. And, and to turn from their cold and callous heart that we saw ele- evidence just right here in Malachi, okay, through their lack of giving. And in your handout, well, before I give that, don't go to Matthew 6 and look at this. Look at 19, verse 19. Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth. Don't lay these up for yourselves where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Look at that. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break uh, through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In your handout, Jesus knew that the people were materialistic and in love with their earthly treasure. Jesus knew that. He knew they were in love with their earthly treasure. Thus, in your handout, he charged them here in Matthew chapter 6 to lay aside their materialistic attitudes and turn their hearts towards God. After all, look in verse 24. No man can serve two masters. Neither e- neither either or for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. You can't love God and love money at the same time. Okay? And so God warns them and he tells them. And, and by the way, Um, go to Luke chapter 18. Here's another another example. Okay, Jesus rebukes them and tells them and brings strong warning to them that you're in love with earthly treasures. I don't want your heart here on the earth. I want your heart uh, for me in heaven. I want your heart and your treasures in heaven. I don't want you storing up things on the earth. Peter is another example uh, of a man who is a small businessman. Okay, who owned a commercial fishing, fishing business. And when Christ called Peter, he called him and said, take up your cross and follow me. You've heard that. And, and, and what Peter did is he shut it down. He shut his business down. He left his nets and his equipment and he followed Christ. He gave it all to the Lord. Okay, look at Luke chapter 18. Look at verse uh, 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, okay, that's the wrong chapter. How about Luke 18? Try that. I'm in the wrong chapter. Luke chapter 18, verse 28. I'm like, man, that's not what I'm wanting to say. That doesn't match. That doesn't even go with, that's out of context. Then Peter, verse 28 of chapter 18. We're in the right place. Then Peter said, lo, we have left all and followed thee. Hey, Jesus, I did what you said. Hey, man, I just want you to know I'm obedient. Got it going. Hey, I did it. I'm for you, Jesus. Woo! Okay? Look at this. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake. Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come life everlasting? Here you see this, and he he tells them. Look at this. Peter says, Um... Hey, listen, I, I've left everything for you. I just want to know what it's in, what's in it for me. Hey, what am I getting out of this? What does Jesus tell him? G- Jesus tells him, you know, he says, listen, whatever you give, okay, whatever you give, you're going to get, you're going to get turned back to you. Everything that you lose, you're going to receive again. Everything that you give away, you're going to get again. 
That's what he tells him. He says in verse 30, Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting? Hey, Peter, don't you worry about it. Whatever you get, whatever you lose, or what do you give away, you're going to get back. Okay? I want you to know God noticed and it mattered to God what Peter did. Now, turn to Mark chapter 12. I know there's a lot of verses, but, you know, it helps us to gain understanding. And um, we don't want to be shallow in our thinking and our learning biblically. So look at Mark chapter 12. And look at this. This is the story of the poor widow. I love this story. Okay, this is, the, this is the widow woman who gives. And this is the poor widow. And look at this. Okay? Look at verse 41. Chapter 12, verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people came or cast money into the treasury. I mean, they're lining up. They're giving. And many that were rich cast in much. Hey, the offering's up. Woohoo! Look out. Awesome. Verse 42. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, about a penny today, which, which make a farthing. Verse 43. And he called unto him his disciples and said, look at the lesson. He said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast in the treasury. What? Did you hear all that jingling going on, God? Jesus, hey, you see them bucks? See all that cash? See all that change you're throwing in? And you said she's given more? Verse 44. For all they did cast of their abundance. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Hey, think God noticed her? Think it mattered to him about her? Yes or no? Yeah, in your handout, write this in. It truly touched Christ's heart because she sacrificed in order to give to God. She sacrificed. Hey, I want you to know, God noticed giving before the law. God noticed giving during the law of Moses. Now lastly, very quickly, giving in the dispensation of grace in which we live. That's where we live. Write that in. Today we're not living under the law system program, the Old Testament law system program. Romans 6.14 says, For ye are not under the law, but under grace. See, we're not under the law-based uh, performance-based system. We are saved by grace, kept by grace, and we live by grace. So how should a grace uh, believer, a person who lives in this grace, how should this person, uh, you and I, respond uh, to the Lord and our Savior? How should we respond now? Okay, We saw before the law, we see during the law, God noticed it. It all mattered to him then. What about now? Okay, What about now? What about me? Well, in your handout, Giving is the natural, normal response of a person that has experienced God's amazing grace. Hey, have you experienced His grace? Let me hear you say amen. Amen. If you have, let me tell you something. Your giving should be in response to that grace. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what God is teaching. Like Noah and Abraham before the, uh, the law was ever written, we give because we're so thankful for what God has done in our lives. They were thankful they did what? They gave. We are thankful. What do we do? We give. Hey, I give because I'm thankful. By the way, do you notice a, a certain word of thanksgiving? It's two words put together, slammed together, mushed together between two pieces of bread with mayonnaise, salt, and pepper, and turkey. I plan on eating some of that. It's good. Thanks what? You know when people are thankful, you know what they do? They give. It's natural. It goes hand in hand. It goes together. In your handout, question, does our giving matter to God today? Is God deeply interested in our giving? Does He even notice when I give, when I make sacrifices and give? Well, here's a verse for you. Philippians chapter 4. And look at this. I won't make you turn to any other verses. This is the last verse. Okay, Philippians chapter 4, and look at this. Does God care about us today? Look at verses um, uh, 15 through 16. Look at it. 
Now ye Philippians, chapter 4, Philippians, you got to look at it. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye, and o- ye only. Man, you were so giving. You communicated to me. You gave. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. You didn't just give once. You kept giving because of my need. Look at verse 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you. Look at these next words. An odor of sweet smell, okay? A sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Hey, have you seen those words before? Boy, just as in the nostrils of God, before the law and during the law, when they gave, it was sweet, sweet smell to God. Paul says, you know what? When you gave unto the ministry that I, I gave unto you as I preached and established churches, and you were blessed by the teaching, you were fed spiritually, and you gave accordingly, let me tell you something. It was a sweet savor to me, and it was well-pleasing to God. Paul says the same thing. Here we read that that their giving was like a sweet smell to God. And Paul says that their giving was well-pleasing to God. Hey, the other night I walked into the house and uh, Melissa was cooking something. I said, "Mm, what's that? I smelled it as soon as I opened the door. It's homemade vegetable soup. Can I tell you what? It was sweet smell. It smelled good. Couldn't wait to partake. And let me tell you something. Just as that was a sweet smell to me, you ever get fresh clothes right out of the dryer, man, they're a little bit still warm, and you go, like, clean sheets. There's nothing like sleeping on a bed with fresh, clean sheets. Man, it's nice. And you get in that, and as soon as you flip the covers, you know, that down air snuggle, whatever you use, whatever you do, you know, comes out, and you're like, ah! Can I tell you, that's how God feels about your giving. It's sweet to Him! And people say, ah, well, people don't notice. Who cares what people notice? God notices. And that's all that should matter to you. God knows, and it pleases him so much when I give. Man, he's blessed by it. And again, when you give, just as here in this verse, God gave them a promise. Look at verse 19, Philippians 4. People say, oh, I want a promise from God. Well, here you go. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I want you to know God is for you, and God will take care of you. You do your part by giving out, uh, as unto the Lord, and out of grace, not out of grudgingly, but you grow in this grace also. I want you to know God has promised he'll meet your need. God promised he'll meet your need. Say, what will it be? It probably won't be monetarily as he promised Peter and all the disciples in, in the nation of Israel. You give and you forsake all. I'll give you a hundredfold when the kingdom is established again. God's not promising us that. He promised that to the nation of Israel. But I'll tell you what he is promising you today. He's promising to meet your need. Everybody wants to have, well, my need is prosperity. Why can't I tell you something? That ain't in this book. Prosperity is not in this book. God didn't call you and send his son to die for you, for you to live in the lap of luxury and to live unto yourself. God says, yea, and all that shall live godly shall suffer what? Persecution. I don't see that part of the prosperity gospel. Why? Because that's a man-made gospel. It's not in this book. In your handout, I want to ask you a question. Did you notice some common denominators in each time period we looked at? Did you notice some common denominators before the law, during the law, and during Christ's earthly ministry, and also for our dispensation of grace? Did you notice some things? Here there are two things that's that's uh, predominant all the way throughout. True believers have always had a desire to give to God. Those who profess God, profess Christ, have always had a desire to give. Listen to me, church. Look up here. This isn't a way for you, for, 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 for you to get all worked up emotionally about giving. Preachers just trying to get more money out of, out of us. Absolutely not. I'm just saying out of your love relationship to the Lord, you should respond accordingly. And I'm saying that if you are a true professing believer of God, you know what? It should come natural from you as a desire to want to give to Him. Okay? But then why are you teaching it? Why do you think? 
Because we haven't grown and abounded in this grace also. We need to grow. Number two, here's another thing that was predominant and it was a common denominator through every time period we looked at. Their giving was noticed by God and it either brought commendation or rebuke. God notices. So, tonight we answered the question. Does my giving really matter to God? Does what I give really matter to God? Church, does it? Yeah, it matters. Absolutely. Say why. In your handout, here's why. Because it demonstrates how much we truly love the Lord. Remember, 2 Corinthians 8, 7 through 8 says this. Grow in this grace also. Church, let me ask you this. Do you have room to grow in your prayer life, yes or no? Amen. How many of you prayed enough today? You got it good. You don't have to pray the rest of the day. You're good. Okay. No, you have it. Why? Because you know the Bible says continue in prayer. Uh, pray without, uh, uh, continue in pray, prayer and that we should pray without ceasing. Okay. We can grow in our prayer life. How many of you have read this Bible enough? You don't really need to read it ever again. You've got it all down. You're pretty much good. You, you got it. None of us. You know what? We can grow in our Bible learning and our growth in faith. We also can grow in our prayer life. Hey, can I submit to you tonight? God wants us to grow in our giving. Doesn't that make natural sense to you? Doesn't it make sense that if we're growing in our grace and learning God's truth and in Christ and being Christ-filled and growing in our prayer life to Him, shouldn't we be growing in our grace giving? We should. All right? And so I appreciate your attention. I really do. And uh, listen, you, you, you be praying for our church. You be praying for your pastor as I give these messages. Because listen, I know for some people this will go over like a lead balloon. I'm going to preach a message on Sunday entitled, What Kind of Giver Does God Really Love? What kind of giver? The Bible gives three types of givers in the Bible. Three. I'm going to share those three. One of them God says that He loves. The other two, no. One of them God said He loves. I'm going to share with you what those are. Some will not like the message. You want to know why? Because Satan does not want God's program, His gospel, to continue. Satan wants the work of the Lord to be hindered. Church, we got to do everything we can, listen, spiritually and even in our grace giving, to make sure that the work of the Lord continues. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we love you.